South Korea's economy has been showing signs of an easing slowdown. That's how the country's finance minister is evaluating the local economy at the moment. For more, we are joined by Professor Yang Yidong this morning. Welcome. Hello, good morning. Professor Yang, is that so? Our figure is really indicating that the country's economy is showing positive signs. Yes, we have very solid evidence in numbers that our economy somehow uh, is down. Well, since last February, Korean government has officially used the term economic slowdown, but this term is somehow toned down to age slowdown since the August. Well, in August, our export has improved somehow. The first 10 days in September, our average export records of semiconductor has recorded the largest amount in this year. And our export of uh, ships and automobiles have reduced by 8.4%, which is the smallest, smaller than the previous month uh, of July, that has recorded over 16%. And employment has increased over uh, 270,000 people in August, uh, which is even bigger than in, uh, the record in uh, July. And also incoming tourists has increased uh, in, in the first eight months by uh, 6.5 million people. Well, this record still remains about uh, less than the 60% compared to uh, 2019 before uh, pandemic era, but this number is uh, on improving. So we can tell that uh, yes, true, and we have a solid evidence that our economic uh, slowdown is somehow is down. So improving chip exports and better job figures are telling that it is showing positive signs, but there are still lingering risks, right? What uncertainties are there? Yes, uh, well, we should keep in mind that in July, our economic records has been very, very uh, sluggish. Uh, we had uh, less uh, internal consumption, investment, export, and all those uh, you know, the negative impact for the uh, reverse growth were uh, offset by the reduction in import. Mm -hmm. But this trend may remain almost the same because our economic environment has never changed at all. In the United States, in all of the world, the monetary tightening policy is still, uh, you know, going on due to uh, increased interest rate. And the war between Russia and Ukraine is going on that impacts on the uh, increased fluctuation in the uh, prices of uh, uh, raw materials and uh, the uh, food. And also, the, for the past couple of months, the crude oil has increased over 15%. So we can tell that all the economic uh, environment have never changed in favor, mm. but our company is doing a very good job and doing a very best to overcome all this uh, negative economic environments. Right. There are still global uncertainties like the Ukraine crisis, as well as the uh, rising oil prices are they are getting in the way. Now, on top of that, yesterday, South Korea uh, announced that it will inject one point six billion dollars worth of investment over the next five years until 2028 to create these industrial clusters for cutting edge technologies. Now, what's behind this ambitious level of investment? Well, already last March of this year, the Korean government announced about 15 national, you know, the high-tech clusters for the areas of semiconductors, display, secondary battery, bio, future cars, and robots. Mm. And the largest cluster is located in Yongin near Seoul, involved with the Samsung Electronics uh, business. Well, there are a couple of very interesting issues regarding this government support for this uh, high tech, uh, you know, the technology cluster. The first one is due to very uh, serious uh, constraints, restrictions in the United States, and also uh, trade the, uh, contention between China and the United States. The Korean government and many Korean firms have recognized that they need to invest in local territory in, in Korea like uh, you know, TSMC in Taiwan. So that is a major reason why Korean government has successfully persuaded the large companies such as Samsung, LG, uh, to invest their money in the local uh, territory. But the dispute still remains very strong because, you know, Yongin, the largest uh, national technology cluster, is located very near to Seoul. And many people are very much concerned that they still have investment will focus on Seoul or satellite cities in near the Seoul. For example, the semiconductors area, over 90% of investment will be located in the uh, satellite cities of uh, Seoul. So that may cause another imbalance in the overall regional development in this peninsula. 
Sure. On top of that, South Korea's finance ministry announced that it has revised down its annual tax revenue estimate to around $257 billion, right, mainly because of weak corporate earnings and a slump in the property market. Now, how is the country looking to manage so that this reevaluation has a limited impact on the livelihood of the people here in the country? Well, the, uh, this error in the tax revenue estimation is not new this year. For the past uh, three years, I think this is the third the year that has recorded error in the tax revenue estimation. But the major difference in the first two years, in the last three years of the, this year, between this year, is in the first two years, uh, we had the excess tax revenue due to very fast uh, recovery from uh, economic uh, slowdown due to a pandemic. But this year, we had a very terrible economic performances uh, due to very less export and the reduction and shrinkage of uh, the national asset markets. So corporate tax and capital gain tax were the major uh, factors for the reduction in the uh, tax revenue. Well, the Korean government will uh, replace and substitute this uh, reduction in the tax revenues with the, uh, uh, you know, the uh, transfer from the, uh, the foreign tax equalization fund because, you know, the Korean government could uh, sell lots of dollars to keep our the Korean exchange rate in a very stable uh, level. But this is a very temporary uh, reaction because Korean government declared that they will not use any more uh, national budget to uh, make up for this uh, reduction in the tax revenue. Well, the impact of this era in tax e uh, evaluation we are supposed to uh, support 40 percent of national income for uh, local as the local finance subsidy. So reduction in the national income means we have to also reduce our subsidy for the local government. That may impact on uh, you know less affluent people in very uh, different regions in Korea. So that's a big big problem. All right, Professor Yang Yidong, thank you so much for your insight this morning. You have a good day. Thank you. Have a good day.